That's now perfect. we can start so, Pocket Change, uh, episode five. Episode five. Wow. Should we introduce ourselves, like, especially for the audio side? Like, there's people that might not have any idea who we are. Should we introduce ourselves or just just talk? Yeah. You go ahead, Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. Old school flips on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And what are you in real life, Jimmy or James? I'm just Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> in fake life, I'm old school flips. In real life, Jimmy. Okay. I'm Joe. In real life, I go by Philly Picker on YouTube, Instagram, and in t- and on TikTok also. Oh, you're out. You're telling everyone you're on TikTok. Well, I I, I hang around on there sometimes. I'll introduce <laughs> myself. My name is Dan from Dan in Demand um, on YouTube, Instagram, and and you probably know me from my eleven thousand followers I have on Poshmark. I <laughs> probably know me from that. They came I, over from Poshmark to the podcast, actually. Yeah, I was. It, it. I decided since I had eleven thousand followers on Poshmark, I would go ahead and start my own podcast. Can you put links to like stuff like that on? Pos- I don't. I've never used Poshmark ever. I don't even know. But put a link to Poshmark. Like what? What's the what's the purpose of having eleven thousand followers on Poshmark? I'm gonna tell yeah. you this. I'm gonna tell you. I'm I'm gonna say this right now too because there's only you two listening and then right in in real time in real <laughs> having eleven thousand followers on on Poshmark feels a lot like having a thousand followers on whatnot too. It's like huh. I, I'm st- I feel like it's almost the same thing like having having a <laughs> having not like eleven to one but it's almost like <laughs> I had a thousand followers on whatnot which is cool. It feels good. It's pretty yeah. cool. I don't even have a thousand on one. I was excited to hit like a thousand on Poshmark, but it's just like literally people you do a giveaway and you're like, you make people like follow you to do the giveaway. And then I noticed some people they'll, they'll unfollow you afterwards, but it's like, they probably don't care what I'm selling that, Uh, you know, there's some people that are going to have to send all 11,000, a love letter. No. What is that noise? I don't know. Someone's doing laundry. I think not me. No, Oh no! Are you receiving a fax, Nam? Is that <laughs> no? I don't, have, I don't even have a landline. Is um, well, Dan, you are, you know, you're not just a regular posher. You are an ambassador, right? I am the you're ambassador. ambassador. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and I looked at I let ambassador one because Ambas- oh, once one. I start thinking uh, I could brag about one? being an ambassador. Like I was eventually, one the top or is at the bottom? How many levels? Like there's what is two. One? There's two. Two levels. Oh. But by the time I get to two, I'm probably gonna be. There's probably gonna be an ambassador three. <laughs> like I thought it was like a brag, oh. and then instantly told someone I was I was a uh, um, pos- Poshmark ambassador, and they're like, "Well, what are you?" And I said one, and they're like, "Well, I'm a two. <laughs> well, well, I would think one would be better. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Other podcasts have like Emmy Award winners. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dave. He's an Emmy Award winner now. But we have an ambassador. I mean, we have an ambassador. Well, they're probably I'm, he's probably an well, he might maybe not. I don't he I don't know if he sells on Poshmark. Well, if he did, he'd probably be an ambassador. He'd be an ambassador. Yeah, probably a better ambassador than I am. Maybe so, an ambassador too. Is eleven K is that a big deal then? Like is are you no, no, no like, anytime no? anytime I anytime I say that someone's always got like 55,000 or something crazy. <laughs> like, it's that's, just, that's an ambassador, too, if they have 55,000. So, well, what, it, are, yeah, what there, are the requirements different. for an ambassador, too? Because you just made one. So, well, wait. to be an ambassador, too, I know the first step is I stop reading after step one is to be an ambassador one for six months. Like, uh, oh. so you, so you got to put your time in. You have to have like 100 <laughs> listings, which I have that. You're going, you're going past love letters and sending um, pictures. So oh. we're talking like what's six months from from November? Um, <laughs> six November months from November is May, I believe. Is it May? Yeah, sure. so yeah. Well, in springtime, I guess I can I can talk in ambassador too. But there's a lot of stuff. To, you have to like I think you have to share sixty thousand times or something, and I'm at like ten thousand. Oh, oh well, well, you gotta step it up. Yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, <sighs> man. I could be sharing, <laughs> yeah, but instead gonna of get it done like six months. What's that? I don't think you're gonna get it done in six months. You I don't, don't think, think so? Yeah, probably. Not if you're probably. only at 10k right now. Hey, I've been on Poshmark for three years, four years. <laughs> that, four the, years. Math stacked, the math is stacked against you. Right? Well, there there might be an ambassador ten by that time. There so. could be. No. I mean, not to 
not to put you down or you know no, I felt discourage, like you, discourage you from trying to be ambassador uh, two point felt like I was being attacked by you. I was I wasn't attacking. I felt well, a little bit attackish. Is that a right <laughs> is that the right word? Attackish. Attackish? Sure. <laughs> I felt uh, I felt attacked this weekend. I was gonna uh, say attack like the like the messages that Dan gets on eBay. Uh, well, so what time, what time was that alert uh, that came in, Jimmy? What time did he alert us? About what time this? was the Dan alert? I don't yeah. remember. Oh man, I, I it was one. I, I was shaking. I was so mad. <laughs> yes, you know, like I think I think it was maybe seven a.m. We got to it, we got it was pretty, for his time too, right? It was pretty early. Oh, you know what? I did. I listened last week back to our to the podcast. Yeah. On audio, I didn't listen to the audio version. I listened, I listened to us on Spotify, and I listened to us on uh, what's the other one? I didn't I listen know. to us on iHeartRadio, but you can listen to us there. Samsung, I don't have a Samsung Amazon? device. Is there an Amazon? Amazon. I was listening to us on Amazon and uh-huh. Spotify, and as far as yesterday, uh, we're on Apple now. Just so you guys know, if you're if you're well, if you're listening oh. to this on Apple, then you would know. But if you want to listen to us on on you can just look for the uh, I don't know how to change the art, so it's a uh, <laughs> just look for the hot like air balloon. Air it's, glider. Air... <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not. Oh my god, we're gonna get this podcast canceled. It's, it's like a default <laughs> picture of a hot air balloon. I have no idea how to change it. Is, is that like the egg that people used to get on Twitter? You know, just a Twitter egg. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the egg. Yeah. You remember that? That's cool. Yeah, do they still do that? They don't do that anymore. Well, it's not called, cool. isn't it called X? Don't you? It's use... X, but I mean, they could still have an egg. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm not a Twitter guy. I never, I don't even, oh, you don't X have a Twitter you, account. You don't tweet? I don't. I, d- I did. I'm not a I, Twitter reader. My Twitter, my Twitter was, uh, it was uh, like a, I put out my sports bets. What was your, t- what's your Twitter handle? Oh, Is it's that a Dan thing? and Demand. It's Dan and Demand. Dan and Demand. All right. Yeah, I, I should probably change it because it would be so weird if you I just because I like wanted to just not like to brag about my bets, but I wanted to like be <laughs> transparent and this is what I'm betting. And th- then <laughs> I put it out there and then I got sick of it because I kept on losing. So then it was like, oh, <laughs> God. it's hard to brag on betting when you're lo- I th- I'm pretty sure if you yeah. want to be someone that like a reputable person, you have to win. Oh, it's just, a, it's just to- like another. Another like That's... place to like hang out, I guess. Were, were, were you selling your bets? No, God, like, no. Did you did you no. have the lock of the week a, and all that? Have a course? No, uh, no. It was just yeah, something yeah. to to like share. Like it, my my Twitter was like different things. It was like I used to collect sports cards and would put my sports cards out on there. And did you um did you get any bad messages on uh, Twitter? No, but I got a bad message on eBay. That's yeah. Oh, great. Thanks for reeling me back in, Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying here. We, yeah, we are I'm trying, to, podcast. I'm trying to keep it on the tracks, right? Yeah, I know, because we went off the we, we went, went off, off the again. rails last week. We went off so the rails. Beginning. I'm trying to keep it on track. No, but... so, like this past weekend was Veterans Day on Saturday. Um, yeah, thank you, know? you to all the veterans out there. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh, Joe, that was my line, Joe. We practiced that I was going to be the <laughs> thank you, <laughs> veterans. Thank you. Yeah, some of us, some of yeah, us, we practiced. Practice we, were... we practiced this, we yeah. practiced. and then we also practiced and we were going to talk about practicing it. <laughs> what is we're, wrong with we're, you, Joe? We're doing great. Good gosh, <laughs> Jimmy, cut all this out, cut it all out. Oh, Dude, I don't, I think I'm going to leave it because it's great, it's good stuff. Okay, all right, good stuff, I guess. I'll yeah, some of us this last week when we're actually celebrating and honoring, you know, our veterans that, you know, put their lives on the line to protect us and stuff like that. And some person was messaging you like, hey, what was happening? Like, what's happening? What's going on? Like, yeah, I bought you know what this weekend me. is? Yeah, he bought a shirt for me on Saturday afternoon and wants to know first thing Monday morning. He bought it two days ago. What the heck's taking me so long? Why haven't I shipped this yet? <laughs> So I was so angry. And I was so angry. I wanted to save it for talking to you guys about it on the podcast, but I couldn't take it anymore. So, so you, I had so you sent out the uh the red alarm yeah, emoji. Yeah, I'm like, what's this guy's deal? You know, to us first. And as soon as we responded, that once we see that emoji, we know that you know yeah, you pull over to the side of the road if you're driving, like whatever you're doing, drop what you're doing. It's code right. red time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we had we had a we had a check in with Dan, and he yeah. he let us know that he got this mean 
we just call it mean um you know message from from a from a buyer yeah so i politely told them that it was you know saturday that it was veterans day so you can't we're not shipping on saturday because the post office was closed and then on sunday well the post office closed every sunday so i can't ship it out that day and then I, I I have two day handling, so I didn't technically have to ship it out till Tuesday. And uh, I asked him if he wanted me to cancel the order if it was going to be too late for him. <laughs> you know what was great is because you showed us some of the response, and like what was great is like once you told them why, like oh, like you could you could see like a light bulb went off in the in the messenger's head, and they were nice from that point on because they just realized like how. I'm gonna say how dumb they they made themselves look by right. asking that question. Like I'm, I mean, there's no see, other like, way to get it out. There was no other yeah, way. You bought it Saturday. No, you yeah. know, it's Monday. Yeah, but how, like, you, yeah, it, like at least I had a, like defense. But what, if it wasn't Veterans Day, what's what's your defense? Like, I ship I have Monday. Day, I, I ship Monday through Monday well, through Friday. Friday. I have yeah. two day handling time. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys ship? Do you ship on Saturdays? I don't. No, nope. I don't ship on Saturdays either. And I do. That's that's why I was most upset about because, like, uh, yeah, I would have shipped it. I would have shipped it on Saturday. My, I, one I of my favorite little lines to use when I message someone like that is per eBay policy or per my eBay shipping policy. And if you see my handling time, like you'd say, is one or two days or whatever, this is not due to leave until Tuesday. Like, I always use per policy. I love it. Per to this, per that. Per safe, per protection policy, you know, eBay's protection and buyer and seller protection policies. Because if you put that, like, it's in the policies. And so many people don't understand or pay attention to policies. But that's why they're there, to make sure, like, stuff like this doesn't happen, right? Like, it's your shit, your handling policy is this many days. Do you ever pay attention? Where does it, like, if you looking, if you're looking at someone's set uh there if you're looking to buy something where where does it say their handling time is like i you see know, it when i'm listing I, th- I think it will say like expected by this delivery thing. date maybe yeah so is if that, you go by the delivery date i think it's just an they estimate the delivery date but they don't specifically that. say like two day handling do they i think maybe in the fine prints there okay so i'm um, just making sure that i'm not going crazy because i unless it's i feel like it's hard it might be hard to see that maybe right. i don't know because I always see like estimated delivery, or you'll receive this by this date, but I don't see specifically. I have two day handling time. I don't see it. Yeah, right. Like I see it when I'm listing stuff, but I don't see it. Like, and I don't. I don't know. I'm, I, should, I guess I'm bad about saying. I don't buy well, that's a, a good ton of point. Stuff like, is it somewhere? Anymore. Is it somewhere there for the the buyer to see? Which would be important. I think you're right. Now, in in the end, like you, like we we both know, it is your policy. And yeah, eBay will back you now. Could you potentially lose a sale? Because you said, you know, I'll cancel. That's where, you know, there's, you know, it's it's how much are you willing to lose sales well, over that? Right? Okay, so so m- me saying I'll cancel it was because I literally I would have canceled it. Like I, I don't know. He could have just been. It might have been in my head the way I read it, but I felt like his first message there was dot 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 yeah, question true. question. <laughs> I swear I saw an explanation point, but there was no explanation. There was a couple of capital words in there. <laughs> yeah, it was. It felt like felt like he was attacking. Like it, yeah. I wanted to. I put that in there because literally, if I didn't get like a a ding on my account, I would have canceled it. It was like a fifteen dollars shirt. Like it's yeah. nothing. And, and the thing is, is that I ended up shipping it out yesterday anyway. But the shirt had it has like this. It had like a. A spot on it, like right in the front, oh boy. that I marked oh, it down, and I guarantee you he doesn't. It's coming that back. Either. Well, I did you? you. More importantly, did you did you add him to the ever growing list of blocked members? Uh, he will be, I mean, uh, you know what he he when he responded and he said, um, you know, you can return, you ship it Monday or Tuesday. We became friends, I guess. Oh, uh, so I'll see how he. <laughs> so next, I guess, I, I, guess, I guess you want to do a podcast with him. I, guess. I might, I might. I, I, well, I, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I might. Well, I I did add someone to the block list last oh, week. I was talking about now. The... He's an eBay ambassador. Oh, oh I wish. Do they have that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's like a what is it? The top rated or they used to have Power Seller. 
Oh yeah, but right. <laughs> like it's, they sent you a certificate, right? Friends, now. I feel like I got sent. A, they sent you a certificate, or you printed it out. You printed it out, right? Yeah, you could be an eBay power seller. What? I, <laughs> I, I used to I, have that. I don't remember. What, I don't remember the details. Of it. They took it away uh, quite a while ago, right? Yeah, yeah. I but I think you printed out. I was. I feeling like I printed it. Like <laughs> you print out like a little certificate. I believe. Yeah. I could be you don't have that framed on your wall. Add that. Add that, that to your list. Former. I need to make eBay a power. Here eBay power seller for Dude, your, your, yeah your resume is amazing actually I'm top rated I well, what's what's the other one top rated plus right yeah, yeah. but what, what do you have that one day handling time yeah because yeah it was back to that free, because I have um, returns or something I do two day handling on my all my items uh and I and I but I ship daily I have two days right. in case of because I, I live up in Indiana and uh if it gets snow, I'm definitely a scared scared of snow. Like I hate the, I'm I'm confused. Is it in case? Oh, it's in case you can't make it to the post if office. Yeah, if it's like a snowstorm or something, I, I don't have to, I don't have to truck out. So I usually I was, do that for the winter time. And I was then, like, is it Indiana an island somewhere? Like, what? no, it's this canoe. That would be so cool. Make, you, <laughs> make sure the canoe works. Yeah. No, and so if it's, I'll, I'll do pickup too. But like. Uh, we've had a we had a few storms uh, the last few years no. where you know there's at least one a year where the postman doesn't make it through rain or sleet or snow and they don't show up. <laughs> he didn't show up to pick up my packages. <laughs> so I do two day handling in the winter time and then in the <laughs> spring I'll switch it to to one day. Except this last year it was like I just kept it two day all the time just to have it in case I. But I very rarely do I not ship on a Saturday and very rarely do I not. Uh, ship every day because then i sell cl like the clothes and shoes and stuff it's it's not like hard it's not like hard uh right. stuff to ship like you you guys sell stuff that you get it it's you just, don't want to ship it today right it's just wild because most most ebay buyers are used to it not shipping right away most buyers that shop on their regular are used to it not but this time of year it changes for sure this time oh. of year that it's not all just usual but ebay shoppers and you're starting to get some of the, the holiday shoppers on there yeah and they are on a time crunch and they want it whether it's reasonable or not like that guy was not reasonable it starts to change for sure this time of year and you yeah. have to be i focus on getting it to the post office as quickly as i can and this time of year i should say this time of year if we have a lot of sales on friday we will go to the post office on saturday if we have like a 15 sale day on Friday, then we'll take that stuff to the post office on Saturday. Oh, I don't, I don't have yeah. to worry about that. I don't have a 15 sale weekend, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, <laughs> hey, this I'm, I'm okay. It used to be that way for me. I think I had nine yesterday, though, on a on a Monday, so that's not bad. Oh, really? That's, that's good. Yeah. I had two. Well, yeah, hold but on. this time of year, that those things all change, and you you do have to be aware of that kind of stuff, like getting yeah. stuff to the not not on Veterans Day, but this time of year in general. Like you got, I do recommend trying to get to the post office as quick as possible because they're getting busy. Things are slowing down. You know, shipping times are slowing down for them. Yeah, we should. Oh, well, it's getting. I don't. If we have to get the dates on, what do you think it's gonna be different this year with that? Is ground advantage and not first class? I think you ground know? advantage is gonna be very busy because I. So, did you guys see? Someone said that the price on ground advantage is gonna be low, going down some, and then really? priorities going up. Did you guys hear that? No. I might be taking. I might be making something up. Someone, someone. I need to ask my post office workers. Someone asked, said something about that. Like, I, 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 I mean, I think it's going to be. Uh, they might have a problem with the ground because I ship most of my. There's very rarely I ship anything priority anymore. Have you yeah. paid attention how fast it gets? Is it? it is it going to get yeah. there? Like, I wonder what the last date. We have to look up the the dates. You know, you usually have this in by. X amount of date if you want to get it by Christmas. I wonder. Oh uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they have them out already. I'll yeah. look them no, that would have been like, smart so, to prepare. Do you offer multiple services? Like, do you offer them to where they can select priority if they want it? I don't uh, want it. So yeah, the one thing I've started doing is because uh, I do flat rate shipping for everything. Um, because I so I sell mostly uh, clothes and shoes. So you know the weights and stuff, right? So the weights. So anything that's uh. Over two pounds, I've started to offer ground advantage or priority just because yep. then I've done I've switched to uh calculated shipping for those. Um, be, I don't know, I don't know, no, it's smart, it's smart, 
Except for like a pair of jeans, like when it comes to shoes, I guess. But like a pair, like something I know I can fit into a padded flat rate, I still keep it at that, which sometimes it, it, it ships. I don't know if I'm messing myself up because like a pair of jeans that is in the same region or zone or whatever. Is it region or zone? Um, near me, it's it's like seven dollars and twenty cents to ship it yep. near me, but I'm charging eight ninety nine. So I don't know how many people have like not well, looked at. That's the one I want to talk to Joe about, like, because that's some since I've moved out here. Like, Joe, you're right there in that huge metro, all these metro areas around you. Joe would be, it would be super smart for him to do calculated <clears throat> and offer both product. Because sometimes on ground advantage, on something over a pound, ground advantage is more than but priority. I just noticed that last week too. If you're, if it goes to one of the local area, like one of the big cities around you, and like I know right where Joe's at, like it's got to be like he has millions and millions and millions of shoppers that he can offer that calculated lower priority price too. I de- I need Joe to do one thing though before he answers. What's that for our listeners? Tell tell everyone where you're from, Joe. I'm from Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> So do you do calculated though? Do you offer calculated? No, <clears throat> no, I just do flat rate on everything. Um, I never really looked that deep into it, but it does make sense because there are times that when I'm shipping something out, I'm shocked that you know something is that cheap to get New York City or some or something like that that's that's nearby. Um, but no, I usually, I mean, like jeans, like nine ninety nine sneakers. I think mm. I'm up to eleven ninety nine now. Whew, um, you're just killing it raking in the profits yeah, you're making money on that shipping but you're anything doubling, you know, <laughs> but any, anything going over to the west coast you know you, you, you yep. get you get hit so and well, since, you, since ebay oh. only releases my listings to the west coast you know <laughs> he's the west coast picker <laughs> that's it yeah I'm not, uh, no, um, but coming west, from color oh sorry go ahead. west coast seller that's it you know that's where i you might want to go in there and market. check you might only have California, Washington, and Oregon <laughs> selected for state that you'll ship to. Uh, now, coming from state Colorado, so though, like in Colorado, I'll tell you, it was weird. I never, ever saw $7.20 shipping. It, nothing was close enough to me to ever get that price. I really? never, yeah, and it wasn't until I moved out here that I started seeing I was like, what is this cheap price? For our listeners, where's here? Uh, Ohio now. Now I'm in Ohio. I'm in right in the middle, central Ohio, Columbus area. Um, it's it's actually wild. Like so, I started seeing that, and that's I made that change, Joe. And I'm if you, I wanted to go for volume of sales. I want I wanted to stop making because I was like, man, I you know my I was doing the same thing, flat rate at like nine dollars. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm making all this. I'm making this extra money off shipping, but can I turn that into more sales if I do calculated? And offer that seven dollars and twenty shipping to someone in Pittsburgh or New York. Like, so I, then how do, how do you set that up? Like, what do you what do you do? You do calculated shipping on on everything. So you have to go into eBay and you have to select to offer your eBay discount to the to the buyer. Mm-hmm. There's a little. There's just literally a little toggle switch I have to go in. There. I don't remember exactly where it's at. Mm-hmm. You got to do that first. So you got to make sure you're forwarding your eBay discount to the buyer. Okay. And then once then it'll be calculated, then you put your measure. You know, I keep a scale by where I'm taking pictures if I'm not sure what it's going to weigh. Mm-hmm. So you do have to put, when you're listing, you have to put your measurements and weight in there. And um, then the buyer pays based on where they're at. And I, I mean, I sell so much stuff, priority mail to New York now, and they're only paying $7.20 shipping. And they love it. Like I, I love it, and they love it. Like so, I'm going for volume. Like I wanted to see. So everything is like, calculated. So everything's calculated. Do you ever see yep. that it gets screwed up by s- sending something calculated to the West Coast? Because there are no, some times where no. I so like I sold. I sell calculated. I I've, I've seen a buyer pay, you know, and it's penny for penny. You know, the label cost me seventeen dollars and twenty eight cents or whatever, and I looked at the order, and the buyer paid seventeen dollars and twenty eight cents. Now they get that discount because you checked it off that you get yes. your eBay, so yes. that's okay. But if you now, didn't have you that on, if you didn't have that on, that might be twenty eight dollars to ship yes. to California. I don't recommend that. If some okay. people do it that way, though, some people right. leave that leave, <laughs> don't forward the and again, I wanted to go for more sales. I was like, I want to get volume of sales up. I don't care if I don't make a dime on shipping as long as I'm not losing money. 
The only place I lose money is the boxes that I buy, but on priority, you can get the free boxes. Anyways, it's I think it's you know it's it's all, but that's what's great about eBay. You can do it your own way. Well, whatever you want to do, whatever works for you. Like, yeah, I just was trying, and I I feel like my sales are. I'm selling a lot more to the East Coast. Was that, and maybe that will change that for you, Joe. Maybe you'll maybe. sell more to the East Coast. I didn't really think about. It. Maybe I will try that. Well, because try it I, out I, for a month or so and see what see if anything changes with it. Joe, I feel like we switched to flat rate at the same time. Like when we both when I first kind of met yeah. you, yeah. and it was because of that. It was because you, if it was going West Coast, it was going to show up like. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen dollars. Uh, yeah, it was, cra- it, was like cra- it was crazy prices to go to. You yeah, know. yeah. especially and I've you- noticed that too. When I've the few items I do offer calculated shipping on, that it's exactly what what they're offering. Yep. Like I'm, and then I'm usually like if it's ground advantage, then I'm using. You know, so if you have that, stuff. if you have that checked mm-hmm. off, does everything that you sell have to go calculate it, or are you able to? No, put, you still can select put, how you want it. As a matter of fact. On bigger items, I use flat rate UPS ground, and I kind of guesstimate. I'll go into so these are some little tricks that I do. I'll go into pirate ship, and I'll put a California zip code in there. For like, let's say I have a blow- what, what what zip code do you use? Nine zero two one zero. Yeah, nine zero exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, the only one. Anyone. <laughs> yeah, it's no the only one, knows one that anybody one. knows. Yeah. So <laughs> no, but like so like let's say I have a blow mold that's gonna go in a box that's thirty two by. 18 by 18 and i you know i measure i know that's about the box is going to go in i'll put those measurements in i'll weigh the blow mold and i'll see what it weighs and then i'll go into pirate ship and make a generic shipping to a location in california and i'll see what the ups ground price is and then i'll use that as my flat rate price so i now know the furthest it's going to go is california and i'll make sure that's covered but if it sells to maryland I'm going to save some money on the shipping in that scenario. I'm definitely covering all, you know, being careful, but on shoes, clothes, you know, like Dan says, you know how much that stuff weighs. You can easily go in there. So, and it doesn't have to be exact. So like if I, if I list a pair of shoes and I know it's under two pounds, I do one pound, 12 ounces. And I do the size of the shoe box, a 15 by eight by five and offer the calculator. Now, if they, use, and I also offer, ground advantage so so but most of the time they're selecting priority because it's cheaper right it's like 15 cents cheaper which isn't a lot but why not select the faster service for 15 cents man i feel like i talk way too much but i get i mean i, get all I didn't want to say it i didn't want to say it but you did i, I, I don't think you talk but i i did look up the information uh, i did He's look like up i didn't want to say it but where's that mute button <laughs> i did look up good the, information the cutoff dates for oh, you so have them? ground advantage and first class, they still have it up here. Is December sixteenth? Oh wow! Priorities December eighteenth. Yep. And priority mail express is the twentieth. When is first. what is Christmas Day on it? What's it a Sunday? This a Sunday, I think. Sunday, right? Yeah, that, that makes they won't be now. Yeah. Will they be living on Christmas Eve then? Be Saturday, yeah, I'm sure they will. I mean, well, no, yeah. so I mean, that's that, that means it asks the question would you guys offer priority and ground advantage on lighter weighted items like things under a pound? Will you open up? I haven't done that, I don't have that. I don't offer priority on my items that are under a pound. No, I I don't. I, I've never, I haven't done that. Not me either. Is that a good, that also, a good I, idea? I'm trying to think. I think last year I kind of. I don't know if I sold a whole lot of stuff because, again, I sell mostly used clothing and shoes. So I, I feel like I, I might just had an idea that I might want to do that because because of that cutoff date. You, is get it just extra, a, uh, you get two extra days. Because, you know, if you have a lot of Christmas presents are smaller items. And if you have some good smaller item toys and stuff on your shelf that you can offer to get there quickly. But then you're also flirting with the, pro- the post office doesn't always come through and get it there quickly. <laughs> I don't know. Then you're dealing with that. So I don't know. Hmm. But so, do you? Is there? Is like a bulk? It's a bulk edit thing, then too, right? Is that all? You can just bulk edit it. To um, no, because you ha- you have to go on, if you don't have the weight and dimensions in there. Yeah. So then I'm, I'm not going to do that. It's going to. It did. I so I went through when they introduced. So I used to do flat rate, just like you guys. 
mm-hmm. in Colorado. When I got out here and then they and I saw those priority lower prices and then they added ground advantage, it took me a lot of work, but I switched everything over to calculated. It took a long time. I think it was worth it. I think it's paid off. I feel like my sales are better. Um and man, it's so wild to me to ship something to New York for so cheap. Like in Colorado, it was like the California to, to you guys. Like when I would ship something to New York, I'd be like, oh my gosh, how much is this gonna cost me? Like it would cost me a fortune. So yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's well, that was a that was a great topic, guys. I'll see you guys well, next week. Yes, yes. <laughs> Joe's going to be shipping something else to California with that sweet Raiders hat he found, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. I was, and that, thanks for the help with that. I couldn't find a brand on it, but uh, I didn't even list it yet. I got to get that. I'm going to do that today. That's, oh, a, I that's a bolo eat. alert. What? A, Raider, a Raiders hat? Anything with anything with Los Angeles Raiders on it. I mean, oh. it's, that's, it's vintage. And, you know, obviously there's been remake stuff, but. Yeah, if you find some old that says Los Angeles Raiders, that ups the value because they haven't been. They were in Oakland bef- before they. So there's that that yeah. time gap, but they were in L.A. back in the '80s and '90s or whatever, early '90s. Yeah. And stuff. Bo Jackson, right? It was Bo yeah, Jackson Bo in Jackson. Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah, Bo Jackson. It was one of my favorites. Yeah, so Joe found a a sweet Los Angeles Raiders like spell out bold block letter block letter hat. It's sweet. Yeah, before I list it, I'll get those keywords from you. I know you're, you know, yeah, you yeah. saw a lot of hats I, and all that. I love sports hats. I'm not great yeah. at trucker hats and stuff, but I've learned I've learned quite a bit about sports hats. My, my, one of my best hats ever was a Los Angeles Raiders hat that I found was a that I sold because it said Los Angeles. That helps the value a lot. Over your right shoulder, I see your Cleveland Indians hat. That yeah, it's still got it. I'm assuming the guy they, they never, never paid. paid. No, uh, it's relisted. Uh, it's relisted for eight hundred. It's got like twelve watchers right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna send out offers on it and see what happens. Mm. I know eight hundred's no eight hundred's close. I think I could get it if I waited. Maybe till baseball season if I waited. I don't know. Hmm. Joe, do you ever sell anything for close to eight hundred dollars? I sold something for six hundred dollars this week, which was oh, close. This week? Yeah, I sold what? eight. That pair of uh, Converse that I was mentioning last week, and they went what? to mentioning. You had it up to your face, and you were smelling them. <laughs> the ones you were sniffing last week. So oh, you sniffing yeah. on this week? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Oh, a, a Lego that I found that was fake, but uh, you found uh, a fake Lego? Lego. Yeah, I think so. I think they're like custom Legos. They don't have the Lego thing in it. it doesn't say. Lego. But anyway, get, getting back to those shoes, I was yeah, sweating. It's probably more important than the Lego. Yeah. So I ran them for auction. I didn't expect them to go this high. They went for six hundred nine dollars. Six hundred bucks. Yeah, and they is it uh, because of the rubber? I don't know. I what, don't was know. That, what was it? The tire? They the tire. To the, yeah. The tire. He, tire. That, that guy didn't win the auction. That guy that was, was asking some weirdo about the tire. asking about the tire. Yeah. Oh, the kick the, the tire guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he. Uh, but the the buyer at the last second, you know how you can go in there and look at the your auctions mm-hmm. or whatever. At the last second, came in and outbid somebody the the second bid was 599 and he bid 609 or whatever at the last second and he had zero feedback the second guy had 3500 feedback oh Oh, man what no i gotta know like we describe what because i've sold made in the usa converse before and i barely got on i under 200 bucks i got like 100 i'm not i'm saying barely i'm like turning my nose to 200 no but i got less than 200 for them these what were, made those ones special? They were they weren't stamped made in the USA, but the back, you know, tag on the on the, like the heel of the shoe, you know, where it yeah, says All Star or whatever. It said it it was a black tag on the on the back. Oh, of it. black tag. Yeah, and when I looked them up, all the ones that said black tag on the back went for like crazy money, and I didn't know if I had them or not. You know what I mean? So I just listed it as auction. I think I started to auction one hundred and thirty bucks, hey, and it stayed great, around yeah. two hundred bucks for. a the longest time and then the last five minutes it went it went crazy and then like i said 609 dollars zero feedback on the guy going to south korea so i'm like uh i weighed it took him three days to pay but he finally paid i mean 600 bucks yeah i'll wait i'll wait three days but i I was crazy man i was stressing about it because the guy the second bidder was had 3500 feedback he was from japan 
So they must, you know. Yeah, that's that makes sense though. Now I don't ever listen to anything you say. Where did you say you got those again? Uh, yards. <laughs> I got them at a yard sale. <laughs> five, how much five did you bucks. pay for? Five, five bucks. bucks. Wow. That's just that's for our awesome, listeners, man. so they can yeah, so. we can reiterate that because. Of course, yeah, you're listening. Man, you're gonna get you're gonna get some heat for selling a pair of five dollars shoes. For <laughs> you ripped yeah. that person off at that yard sale. You're a monster. Bro. <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> well, what's good. your what's your best sale, Dan? My well, best sale from last week or best sale ever? Don't say Fine. ever. Say last. last this week. is like the stereotypical reseller no, question, but I don't ever. know the answer, so I want to ask. Oh, best sale ever. Yeah. I just oh well, not, not not anywhere near that. Uh, I guess the I just sold uh, a few months ago. I sold a Hello Kitty plush for like 150 bucks, and then I've sold the two I can remember. I sold a pair of Doc Martens last year for like 170. There was some like platform suede ones, but I mean that's nothing. Nothing. I mean, no. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever sold. One. I, I had my first, my best sale went over a thousand. I had a, see, I don't have that story, but that was, I was just like the luckiest ever. Like I walked into a thrift store and the lady was bringing a cart out and I saw a knife set on the cart and it was like a big block full of knives. And I was like, please let that be cut. Co. Please let that be cut. Oh, co. Man. She put it on the shelf. I saw cut go across the block. And I was like, Ooh, give me that. I want to see in like $15 for this knife set. And I sold wow. it for 1400 bucks. Wow, but well, that was just like that doesn't happen. Like it was almost like right? that doesn't happen. Like how did they not know what that was worth? Well, that's six hundred dollar pair of shoes for Joe's. Not even his best sell ever. Well, no, I, I those <laughs> shoes, those shoes, I, I did. Like I said, I was shocked that they went that high. I didn't expect them to go that high. What did you I think they're going to go for? What were like the, around one hundred fifty, two hundred bucks? And that's what the comps were around one hundred fifty bucks. For that's what I thought too. Yeah, yeah, made any, but the, apparently the tag because here's another. I have another pair of Converse that are another made. pair of black label. Oh, no, but the, the the label on the back here is white. Yeah, yeah. But this this All Star was thing in the back was black, and it had white. I'm gonna pretend that I've sold one a pair of. Yeah, I'm gonna black. start telling everybody I sold it. I got to start paying attention, Joe. I've never I never knew that. Who knows? Yeah, I this is a I, professional I, podcast reseller podcast, Dan, and we got to tell stuff like that. Yeah, but the. I mean that's good to know. I'm glad we. I'm glad. I'm glad I know that now. And you could you, you could just tell by picking them up. You could tell that they were old. They were you know. Yeah. They just. I knew to look for made in USA, but I didn't know that. So that's. Yeah. New to me. And then you smelled them, so you yeah, really knew. They smelled old too. Yeah. <laughs> I figured that was 1960s, 70s smell. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. They, yeah. they asked. They asked. They asked them to wear them before they shipped. <laughs> Hey, can you wear those and go for a jog before you ship them? <laughs> no socks. No socks. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. What size were they, Joe? Did you? I think a ten and a half. Oh, Ma- so men, men, oh, okay. men's. Men. Men. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you said that. Those oh. kept on saying men's a, a lot there. Well, because I I didn't want you to get excited because I know you're a ten. Well, ten, ten and a half women's. So I didn't. Oh no, ten. <laughs> a women's ten. Not women's ten and a half. Ten. Right. What's happening right now? Why do you why do you know that? Because if you ever ask Dan his shoe size, he'll tell you he wears a size 10 women's because he doesn't want to man up or he doesn't want to what should I say? <laughs> I got you. tell I people that wear a size eight in men. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he's still in a toddler size. <laughs> yes, for sure. Whatever, man. But, but, but the fun thing about being a toddler size is you still can buy those shoes that light up when you walk. In. <laughs> oh. Hey, you got light years mm. on. <laughs> Whatever. Sorry. They'll, they'll Whatever. grow one day, Dan. I don't no, think that's... so. No. Okay. You know, at one point, I used to, I used to be like a men's ten. You. <laughs> Your feet shrunk or what? I don't know. What you, cut, I, what, you cut your toes off? I no, I don't know. I, I like never paid attention to like if I really wanted a pair of shoes that they didn't have my size, I would just buy a pair of tens. My shoes. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did they curl up at the front? Like like uh, I mean I used uh, to yeah, wear sometimes a they extra large shirt, but now I wear a four X. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> 
he cut his toes off. He, 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 wanted, he, he I was wanted to buy Cinderella. Yeah, you know, he wanted to buy grade school shoes. He didn't want to buy adult shoes, so he just cut, just, the, cut the toes. I really off. wanted a pair of shoes, so I would just. I would just. Oh I, I mean, I had nines, nine and a half, tens. So what made what what made you go all all in on the women's size ten? What what? Because I, I so before oh. before I uh, when I was still work like going to the casino job, I ended up having like. If I had foot problems, probably because I wore the wrong shoe <laughs> size. You're wearing five. No kidding. No yeah. kidding. And uh, so I was having a hard time. I, totally. I was having a hard time finding shoes that were comfortable to wear oh to work. Gosh. So I kept on trying different shoes and stuff, and then I figured out I was a a uh, size eight in like some shoes, size eight and a half in some. And, and then people laugh like that. So then <laughs> just start reselling. Like the convert, like because you would conversion, because if it's a kid size, whatever, five and a half, what what is that in women's? I don't know. No like, idea. No uh, idea. I, gotta I, I don't remember now. Every time, I, I gotta like I have to go look it up. But like you start hearing those things when people are talking about that. So then I realized that was a women's size ten. So then I, you know, like why can't I wear a women's size ten shoe if I want to wear women's size shoes ten? Like those Patagonia shoes. If I had just kept them for myself, I wouldn't have. Sold them to some crazy person who said they didn't <laughs> deliver it. Who, which I got a little scared last week. I was talking about those shoes. Do we? I, was I talking about that already in here today? No. Made up. They opened a case against me because they said they didn't re they didn't receive the item, and then they received the item. So then I opened up a case against them for Ooh. misusing, uh, oh. opening a case against me. That's how we do. Yeah, wow. eye for an eye. And I, I was Got still him. scared because it would not. It, last week we talked and you said, "Oh, you'll be fine, Dan," because you used eBay's international shipping. They'll take care of it. You just most of the time when someone says you don't, they didn't receive something. You just upload the tracking, and you know eBay takes care of it. I did that, and the eBay did nothing. It kept on getting alerts that I need to respond to this by the thirteenth, or they were gonna like refund this person. What? They have the shoes. They had the shoes. And it kept on. So my last, I kept on trying to upload the tracking. And then after it was showed as delivered, they said I was not allowed to upload the tracking. So mm -hmm. my only, my only other defense I thought was to report them for, <laughs> for, for lying. Because then I had already told them I wasn't talking to them anymore. Like I was like, you know, you talk to eBay. So I felt like if I reached out to them, like, Hey, can you, you got the shoes obviously. So like you should close the case. I figured they would tell me to talk to eBay because that's what I would do. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to report them. And then I had to wait till this morning. Finally, uh, it resolved. I resolved the issue and eBay closed. the. They, they held my funds for the shoes, but then they released them and everything's good. So basically, I just wasted 15 seconds or was that like a minute of your time telling you that story? I mean, that's a. That's a very frustrating case for you. For me, the only thing that frustrates me about it is eBay's just so inconsistent. Like, that's so... Like, I know if that came across my concierge service, mm. they would be like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll send this over to the global or the international shipping. There's a whole team that takes care of international shipping stuff. Well, for us, It's mediocre. like a whole other division, and they just take care of it. Like, it's not even supposed to... You guys need concierge. Well, I mean, no. I guess I have to probably get my sales up. I guess if I'm going to do that, right? You have to, you have to, you have to be sell. I can't just call up and ask for a concierge. No, I, I, I got mine when I went to the eBay open. It was part of the package. Uh, and so, so I, to, I was. Does eBay open online count? If I do, the I don't know if they do with the eBay open. I don't the online one. I don't know if I don't, I don't know if that's part of the package. You you went to the one in that was in Vegas. The yeah, 2019. I went to two in a row. But the last one I went to was 2019, and that was part of the deal. Was uh -huh. I got the concierge? It was like literally in there, you know. And from what I understand, it's like a lifetime thing. When I, you know, it was, you know, that was a lot of money I spent when I went there, but that was worth it for sure. Getting that. No, but and that's frustrating, you know, because concierge service is great. Those reps are great. They, they, they're they know what they're doing. They when before I had it, I could tell. The reps I talked to before, like I had to tell them how to do their job. Like I had to explain to them, like, no, 
like I would have to tell them, like, you're gonna have to look in further and whatever system's telling because it was always cut and paste answers with them. It was always yeah. you could tell, right? Like they're literally reading off a script and it's cut and paste the answer, and you would almost have to tell them, like, no, look, this was international. This is not my responsibility. There's a team of international that takes care of the international shipping that you need to forward this to. Like you would almost have to tell them that. So that's frustrating. I hope everybody understands. I'm just joking. Like when I a lot of stuff I say, I'm just joking. Like when I just I, said right now. But you don't have a concierge. Oh, you don't. Have no, a no, that I don't actually. I don't. I made <laughs> that up. You, you, you didn't I, go to email. Listen, I just wanted to pretend like I'm as cool as Dan with his ambassador status. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that sounds like a cooler than having an ambassador is having a concierge. So I guess that's what I need to work towards is getting a concierge. A concierge. Joe, do you have a concierge? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Um, I, I have to go through 19. So you don't have an ambassador. You're not an ambassador or have a concierge. No, no. I'm, so, bottom, I'm bottom of the barrel. <laughs> we got we got to make up a status for Joe on some other platform. Like Joe needs to go over that new. Have you guys heard about this district platform? Joe needs to go over there and like become like something <laughs> no. important over there. Right. This this morning we're recording on Tuesday. I was listening to Trash to Cash and they were talking. I was, I've seen other people talk about. I've seen district. And, and I didn't put two and two together between other people announcing that they were going to have their own selling platforms or whatever. And I, and I was, I, they were kind of explaining, I was listening to, to them. Joe, you, uh, you hear about district yet? I, I did hear about it. I saw that. Uh, you didn't tell Tim, me, Joe. Tim and those guys are on it. R R A N And um, I saw Cra uh, Craigslist Hunter. Yeah. He did a video about it. Yep, he did a video of it, but. I don't. I don't know if I understand it. I signed up for it. You right. signed up for uh, it? No, I. As what do you do? I got the app. I got the app. No. Oh really? To sell. So shout out, shout real quick, shout out because you mentioned Tim over at the Reseller Information Network. Tim, I think, is now our officially our number one fan over here. No, oh. I'm joking. No. Cool. Hi, Tim. Number one listener. Hey, Tim. No, we don't. Number one listener. No, he's a fan. No, he, he can't said say. I'm a fan. Okay. He, he said the words. I don't. He said the words. Well, I don't want to make someone. But I also don't want to. <laughs> No, I did pay him to up. say that. I did pay him to say that. You know, I need my share. You guys got to put in your share of that money. <laughs> no, um, no, but I learned about it through those guys, Reseller Information Network. What I understand about it is, and it's still so much in the infant stages, like I don't even know where it's going to go, but like someone like Craigslist Hunter or the Reseller Information Network, they create their own marketplace on the platform. So like within the platform – they now have almost like their Facebook, their version of Facebook marketplace, but it's theirs. Like they, it's the reseller information network marketplace where you can do auctions and sell stuff. They get to decide, they get to decide if, you know, you can apply to be a seller on their marketplace. And like, it's basically whoever runs it approves you or not to be a seller within their marketplace. So like Craigslist Hunter could approve you to be a seller on his marketplace, right? So, like, the thing, the question I have for someone like, for, for like Pete is, how do you feel about using your name and letting other sellers use your name to help sell their stuff? Because that's, that's how some of it works, I think, is how and, I understand And then what do they, like, what does, what do they get out of it? Because you sell on their platform. Do you get know. some of their fees? Or scheme? Do, you... do they get a cut? Like, I don't, like, know. I don't know. Like, well, I don't know. Right? That's a joke, but no, you know, do they get a cut? No, I don't he's know. I mean, he's bound to that. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I was, I'm very new to this. My my understanding of this was listening to uh, um, Trash Cash this morning. And I think yeah. if I, if I understood them right, it was like, so they make the marketplace, the, the content creator or whatever. And then district gets a percentage of the 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 sales is like it's twelve point nine percent or something along those lines, and that's including the transaction fee or whatever. And district gets a percentage, and then the content marketplace gets a owner gets a okay, percentage. So the owner will get a, yeah. No. If I understood it right, I could be completely wrong too. This is very new. I was going to yell at you guys because we're supposed to be a professional podcast and uh, none, not one of us has talked. I didn't even know what it was. I've seen other people talk about that they're going to have their own marketplace. I thought they're all just making their own like <laughs> either own websites yeah, yeah. or like, you know, when I first got into this, everyone had their own big cartel store. 
That's what I thought yeah. it was. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I haven't paid attention enough. No, I, I, I always saw, I saw it on those two videos. I didn't quite understand it, um, what it was. I still well, don't understand what it is. I, next I'll get, week, Joe. I'll get my information from Dan and Demand. From me? <laughs> I no. just wonder. Can... Wait, go ahead, sir. No, I was going to say, next week, Joe, you need to like come to us. and yeah. You're in charge of telling us what, what it is. We uh, just said that you got to go over there. and like I'm a concierge. I got a concierge. Yeah. Dan is an <laughs> ambassador. You got to get some kind of title over there. Yeah, and you, you already have the app like, too. I didn't even know there was an app. I didn't know it was an app. Either. Either. Or is it, I think it's an app, right? I don't know. I, I got I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually already a seller on there. I am part I've joined yeah. one, I've already joined the reseller information network marketplace as a seller. I don't have anything listed, but I just joined now. That brings me to another question that we need to find out. Joe, if you could get on that for me, that'd be great. <laughs> I want to know, can I sell on multiple marketplaces? Like, can I apply to sell on Craigslist Hunter Marketplace and Dan and Demand's Marketplace and Reseller Information Network Marketplace Dan and, and the Crash Cash marketplace. marketplace? Like, can I sell um, on, or, or am I locked to the one? Like, That's good. That's a good question. I was, th- I was wondering that, too, because they... Uh, um, Kevin, well, he was using uh, Death Pile Picker Mike as as like an example for things, and then he said yeah, he was taking. He was, yeah. he was he was t- picking on him too much, so he was gonna pick on someone else. Someone else, oh. so he picked on me. He said Dan and the oh, band. Nice. If yeah. like if if you have an option, are you gonna go with like paying a smaller percentage to like say if because it was something with the payouts, which again I have no idea if I'm saying this right, but it was like if are you going to um, sell on Crazy Lamp Lady? Her marketplace for yeah. X amount, or if you go with Dan and Demand for lesser amount, like oh. which which way do you go? So that made me think that you can only pick one. Now is, it, is this negotiable? Like, can I, I can I, I negotiate with like this? Is the stuff you got to start writing stuff down? Well, you have a pencil? No. Well, I, I just tried to log into the app and I don't know my login. So don't you, now pencil. hold on because pencil? oh uh-huh. you already made an account, Joe. I think so. <laughs> is it Joe the Philly Picker? Did you lock Make that up sure. already? What I would recommend is because I think I don't know. Oh, I so that that poses another question. Does the person that you sign up with get like a like a kickback for you using their link to sign up? Yeah, to their to their district. Their the first I heard about it was in Tim's video. That's the first I I I heard of it, and that's where I went to. But I guess I didn't save my login because. Now I gotta guess the password. It's definitely an interesting concept, you know. Um, that was some of my main questions about it. Was like, does the owner of the marketplace get a little bit of the percentage? That's you know, and how how does that work? How do how do the people that are in their marketplace feel about that? And you know, again though, like someone like Craigslist Hunter, who has made a name for themselves on social media should be able to say, hey, look, you can sell in my marketplace because I've established this social media presence. I'm an influencer now. And you can kind of use my name to sell your stuff. And I'm just going to take a small percentage. So who, that's, who, you know, it's a it's a it's interesting, interesting view on, you know, topic. And there's a lot of ethics that people could talk about on that and how they feel about that. You know what I mean? It sounds like just more of of uh, just more stuff that just keeps you busy. Like, how are you going to do it all? Yeah, that's... No, but I, I, it's probably I, I, there's probably an easy way to. Can you like, in what was it export import whatever your listings from eBay directly? So, into... In Pete's video, he said that they'll do it a one time for you. So like, you have to literally. He said he, and this is in Pete Craigslist Hunter's video. He said that he had to call them. And they sat, they walked him through and did it for him one time. It wasn't like a vendu where you can just cross list inst- every from their point on. They'll move your listings like one time for you. And then from that point on, you have to actually list, list it on that. Yeah. On that. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you know what? So, why I said what I said is because, like, we talked a bit about, I, man, I feel like I talked too much, but I don't care. I'm doing it. We talked about it on Whatnot last week. Like, I'm bad at promoting, I suck at promoting. And, I'm very conscious of it, but I know I'm not good at it. And so like, I don't, that's why I don't like, like, like whatnot as much or like a Poshmark. Cause I feel like you have to do your own 
Instagram or social media promoting right. and district opens up an opportunity where maybe that somebody's good at it. I can kind of, if, if I'm, if I'm able to find good stuff and help sell stuff in their marketplace and that's the value that I bring that I, I find good items to sell and he can get a small cut of it. And the value that they bring is that they're really good at promoting. Like so it's kind a, of like a team effort, right? So if somebody goes into like the RIN shop or whatever, they'll be able to, your, your items will also be listed in that store. Is that how, is that how it yeah. goes? And then, and then when your item store. sells, you pay the 12, whatever that commission is to that. And then they split it between district and RIN. Is that? Yeah. yeah. That's how I understand it. Yeah. And I even heard of a story like, so like Joe deals, shout out Joe deals. He was, he's, I think he's a part of their, he's part of a network. He's part one of part of a district. I think it might be RIN and someone in the comment, like you can message in there. Hey, I'm looking for this. And Joe was able to see that message and say, well, I have one. Let me post it on here. And then that person bought it from him. So like, there's all different kinds of tools on there or like even you, like Joe, maybe you're familiar with everybody that's in your district and you can say, you know what? I don't have that. But I know it's in our page. Someone else has it listed, so I'll find it, and here it is. You know, and so like, right again, that would be someone that's better at like promoting than I am. Someone that's better at that kind of stuff. So there's there's so many options there. The, now, qu- what the, happens- question, the question becomes, will it take off? Right. Well, or, or what happens? Uh, like you said it about, I think it's a risk also because if you have somebody that's a bad seller, does that affect that name of that bu- yes. that that? storefront you know what i mean or whatever you want to call it the you know so if you're you're on there and you're not shipping out on time or you're selling items that aren't as described or like who does that fall back on you know what i mean that's such a good point i was just gonna say like who's response dan when you start one you're gonna have to let us know i'm not um, i'm not gonna start you made an interesting point about the part about uh it other people can market your stuff because they, I was like, who's who's buying? I'm thinking, who's who's buying this stuff? Like, who's gonna go to the district? Is some just like random person that needs something? Are they gonna like look like where to find this? And is district's gonna pop up, or is it people who yeah. are yeah. watching? You know, like I think it's would be more of that. Like right? a content creators following, are they the ones that are gonna be? Fo- they're thinking they're buying something from X uh, certain content creator, but they're really buying it for me or something. Yep. Is oh. It, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. And I then it, know. does it come to if it's just a big eclectic? I don't know if that's the right word. A big like what? What are the? Is there certain items that you sell, or is it certain there's, there's, categories? I've looked at it. There's categories. Each each. So like each district has I categories. Look, like I literally, this is all new to me. Yeah. There's so but, many questions. So go ahead, Joe. That, like how long has district been around? Like I, I've never heard of it. Like yeah. you know, what I mean, I I've never heard. It. So I think so, since October. The average consumer that's out there is going to, okay, I want, you know, some video game. Are they going to district to look for it? That's what I, that's or, or what I was Or are they wondering. just going to go to eBay, Amazon, you know, normal things. Unless, you know, they might be following somebody like you said that, you know, if they're following Craigslist Hunter or Tim or, or RIN Network or whatever, it, you know. Is it all resellers? They might like, be like, oh, probably right now. Like Joe had a really like Joe. That's Joe's questions are because I, you know, I've always said like so. Facebook Marketplace tried to do their thing, and if I, uh, for as far as I can tell, it's flopped. Not hardly anybody sells anything shipping on Facebook Marketplace, and it's because, in my opinion, they tried to play with the big boys and they couldn't because they didn't offer protections. Like that's what Joe just said. Like yeah. if something falls through, if something goes wrong, like what kind of protections? seller buyer protections are they going to have like ebay people have a lot of bad things to say about ebay but ebay keeps you kind of comfy and cozy with all those protections that they offer you know is is, is, is like what not what not stepped up and they're playing with the big boys and they're offering protections what's district going to do about that stuff there's a lot of money that they have to spend to make sure that stuff's in place yeah i don't know i don't know i mean there's Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say one other thing, like because I also now know, like right now they're not offering instant payment. Like it's not till the customer season. A lot of lot a lot of sellers have an issue with that. Like I know what not offers it after a certain amount of sales or something like thousand, that, right? A thousand, a thousand sales. sales. 
I don't know if district offers it in any way, shape or form yet. From what I understand, this is based on, I watched Pete's entire video about it. Craigslist hunters entire video, but that's where I'm getting a lot of my information from what he said. You don't get your money until the buyer receives the item, which a lot of sellers don't like that. A lot of sellers want their money up front before they ship it. So there's that there's all kinds of things that I think they have to work out for sure. Right. Like, like it just shows that it's been delivered. Yeah. So like what now, before you got your, before yeah, you got a, to a thousand sales, I don't have a thousand even, sales. So like right now forever. with whatnot, then you should be not getting your money till they stay. So they they okay. And sometimes you have to go through and look and see that some stuff has been, it's, not been picked up at the post office, so it doesn't show it delivered. So I haven't been paid. So it takes three, four weeks sometimes. Yeah. It's it takes Those forever. And then I'm waiting around for like a dollar dollar thirty. And then he starts texting me and Joe and red alerts and oh, it's, I mean it's, I don't I'm joking. No. No, but yeah, I guess I there's know. so many questions to ask about it and it's it's a topic that's gonna be hot in the community so, coming because people are starting to already talk about it. And you know once because that's once social media gets a hold of it, just like whatnot, man, it becomes a hot topic for at least a minute, you know? Well, I mean, is it going to be, I mean, so I just, I just started selling on whatnot and, and June, <laughs> it's so like a... I'm always, I'm going to be behind. I just figured out whatnot. <laughs> no, I've not figured out whatnot. I just, I, there's, hey, I'm not. You liar. You just wear a wig and you got to, fi- I didn't mean to call you liar rudely. You wear a wig and you got it dialed in, bud. I mean, uh, no, I'll be honest. My show was not, I mean, it was good. I got, I did a raid train, um, wig show this last Saturday. It was, it was fun. I, I think I mentioned I was going to do it last week. It was awesome. That's how I ended up getting a thousand subscribers. Uh, ADH Dave was on right before me. He rated me and he had like over 200, like close to 200 people yeah. in his show. And, uh, so he rated me and, um, I did a show. It was only a 20 minute show. I did all plus show which I thought it would be fun to do all plush. Like yep. I've been selling, I've been trying, I've been messing with whatnot since we talked about it a little, I mean, last week, I don't remember if I said since June, well, I just said a few minutes ago since June. And I have no idea what I'm supposed to be selling on there. Cause I sell mostly clothes and, and shoes. <laughs> and I find other things that I, you- that, I think are worth money that I will sell, but I'll well, take you, it on there. You had a pretty, you, you, it was a pretty good show following up Dave's, raid with plush i mean he sells a ton of plush over there yeah so so i was excited i was excited that so i I did that but it's 20 minutes and my my going into the show i had bought um it was a 50 percent off sale at a goodwill and i bought i bought plush there i paid like the the i got 50 percent off their price that they're asking which was my average buy cost ended up being four dollars and 72 cents for everything it's not just my plush it was all my stuff i bought that day so I had taken that and I'm like, okay, this is these, it was like five or six plush that I bought. And I'm going to build my plush around these couple that were, I thought were good. I'm going to go to the bins and I pay by the pound there. I'm going to find some plush and, and uh, I'll, this would be good. It'll be good. Well, I ended up, wasn't feeling well. So I like, it took me forever to get to the bins last week to go to find stuff. And then I just, there wasn't that many, I couldn't find any really good plush that were going to do, do well. So it ended up like, I was in the show for over uh, $50 and I'm in 20 minutes. I made a gross $84. So like after your fees and taking out my money, I didn't make, I didn't really make any money. Like I didn't make any money. Right. Like it was, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the hard part. every time. That's, that's... And that's what I've been running into a lot doing on whatnot. It, and, and it feels a lot like when I first started reselling, when I first started reselling, I just kind of no idea what, when... No that's idea great. what I was selling. I didn't know what I should be selling. I was looking at, um, oh, I just need to have like a thousand listings, and so I was I would pick up anything that was anything I saw sold. I I take that, and I'm just working towards getting a thousand listings. So then I just have, you know, I have five. I was gonna say five hundred, but not even close to five hundred. I have fifty or sixty items that are probably worth selling, and then I I was you know probably four hundred <laughs> items that aren't worth selling. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know. I got you. <clears throat> well, I, I feel yeah. every time I do a whatnot show. Like well, I think the buy the buy cost is the biggest thing, especially with the, especially, the start. Yeah, yeah. The start the start of you know you're selling them at two three bucks or whatever your start price is. Yeah. If you have four dollars into them, I mean, it's you're already behind the. And I tried ball. to. Is that, I was, is that the same? Yeah. Already behind the eight ball. 
I started all my. Uh, I had a I don't few. Do things. My at Sonya would say, "Don't put, don't put all your chickens before your basket." I started. I had a, a, good a one. couple. I had a couple uh, that I started one off at a dollar. It was one that I had in my show a few times. Uh, it was it was like a it was very specific. It was a Seattle Supersonic or not Supersonic Super uh, Seattle Seahawks uh, like tie ball. It was like a little plush, and uh, it's so it's very specific. You're looking for someone who's a yeah, Seahawks yeah. fan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I started that off at a dollar, and then I had a couple small plush that were just kind of generic. Uh, type that I started off at two dollars. Everything else I started off at three dollars, thinking it was gonna. You know, I had a couple good things in there. I had a had a. Uh, I mean, I that I think was good. Like it, it was a squishmallow reindeer squishmallow. Um, I thought yeah. that was gonna go well. It was pretty big size. I had a, a pillow pet of a teenage mutant ninja turtle. It's like, oh, this will go. And I had a couple that went okay. Like, but you know, for the majority of them, you know, they went for three or four dollars. So it wasn't. I wasn't getting like a ton of bids. Is the um, pl- is the plush at the uh, bins by the pound by yeah. you or is yeah. It- yeah yeah I don't have the um I uh, I don't know how many people I know uh we listen to um Josh Harry, Harry Tornado they they do uh you get like a pull bag for like a dollar yeah yeah that's wow. right. I mean, that, yeah we don't yeah so yeah, yeah. uh but no it's it's what I've said all along about whatnot that became my problem is that once I had to start sourcing for whatnot. But that's such a good point, Dan. Like, I always just thought about when it came time to source to whatnot, sourcing for whatnot. I had too, like Joe said, I had too much into the buy cost on the items when I was selling stuff for two, three dollars a pop. It just wasn't didn't make sense. But I never really put a lot of thought into. I was probably not even buying, like you said, not buying the right items to sell on there. Like uh, the stuff I'm buying, these T-shirts just aren't the right thing to sell on whatnot. Did you schedule your show? No, Sonia and I are talking about that. We just it's a matter of finding time. I don't want to do it on the, around the holiday. So it'll probably be after Thanksgiving that we do it. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, Again, oh, it's, it's all it's all go ahead, sir. Oh, I was gonna say they do they're they're doing a uh, uh Black Friday's uh, like no fees on Friday. Oh really? Yeah, which maybe I, I mean it sounds it, it sounds great. It sounds great, but I'm gonna assume that there's going to be just a a flood of, of a flood of people, which oh, like yeah. like what, what all you? the big names too, yeah. Um, I mean, that I can't compete with. Oh, he's I, yeah. I don't know. That's uh, I'm gonna try it just because I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be home. I'm gonna at least try it, but it's like it's do I it or, like do it do it early. Week. Maybe maybe do it early on Black Friday. I have, a, I have a show scheduled for 9 a.m. and it's like gonna be. Uh, I'm well, just yeah, do, I guess. I well, Dan, I, I figured Dan to be a, a Black Friday shopper. Like he's gonna be out at the the stores. Oh and man, I, I know. I don't. I'm not a big. Do people still do that anymore. Do I, people, don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> honestly, throwing elbows to get a TV. Well, I mean, Black Friday is through the three Wednesdays before Black Friday anymore. Anyways, like Black yeah. Friday was happening last Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Walmart is advertising Black Friday yeah. prices now. So. No, I'm not, I no, I don't like. I don't. I don't. I know the one year Goodwill had Black Friday sale and I was like, I'm going to kill it because everyone else is going to be going to like, <laughs> you know, Best Buy or whatever to get mm. stuff like yep. who's going to the thrift store and the last, I think it was, I mean, we couldn't have been, and I know they didn't do it last year, but I think it was, what was the year before that? I'm trying to, was that a, so did they do it? It might've, it might've been 19, might've been before COVID a few years ago. Cause I don't know if they've done it since COVID. Because I think they're closed. I've never even heard of that. What a black I'll tell you Friday! What, when I was a teenager and I worked at Target pushing carts. Yeah, I worked a Black Friday. Good night. It's insane. Good night, folks. It's insane. It was insane. I, they were literally I like, make, I was having to run to the parking lot and grab one cart for you. Know, they, that's what they told me to do. Like, just go grab them as people unload the stuff into their car, grab the cart, and bring it to the customer. Ugh. Yeah, I ran. Believe it. Is or it not. is it like that anymore? I mean, I haven't been out. I don't, I, I can I don't know. know. I don't think when, so. My my boys were younger. We went out a few times, like that, you know, early. Oh, it was probably like midnight at that time. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. you know, Target or online Walmart. Shopping, man. Online I, shopping things out. You had to go through certain yeah. aisles to get ticket. Like you, know, you had to be so many in line <laughs> to get a ticket to buy like certain yeah. things. That I remember going for video hard. games. It was really? the worst. They they would run out so quick. They oh, would yeah. only have like a set amount of items that were actually, yeah. you know. Like a set amount of inventory for each item, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever done that. I wouldn't do. I I wouldn't want to do that. It sounds. Yeah, but I don't I, even know. If it's, that's a good like. I'm gonna go out. So I live in a small town though, but I'll go to my Walmart and I'll let you know if there's a line or not. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure the lines in Philadelphia will be a little bit. I'm sure there's some people. It's like a tradition more than anything. Like there's. There's definitely people that's part of their tradition is to go out on Black Friday and go shopping. And, uh, my and tradition all... is to complain about it because Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets overlooked. Like everyone's worried about what time stores are open. So you I'm... never you never like growing up on Thanksgiving Day would get the newspaper for the Black Black Friday sales and sit there and look yeah, at it. Yeah, I, I remember doing it. I was a newspaper boy. <laughs> I had to deliver. I had to deliver the newspapers. <laughs> the the paper was I hated it. The paper was this <laughs> thick. It was like worse than a Sunday paper. Yeah, every store, every store had an ad that was Yeah. I said um, I had four paper routes at one point at a, at the same time. Did you drive or did you I, I, I just picture you on a bike? Uh so when I first Video started game when I first started my paper route, I why couldn't did, drive. Why did we notice sooner, Dan? What, that that you were papers? a paper boy. Yeah, I don't because I, I wanted to work as soon as I could work, and when in Indiana you had to be 15, you had to have a worker's permit. You could work. Um, I tried to get a job, and no one would hire me because I was 15. Yeah, so the yeah. only job I could get was a paper boy. So I got a paper route, and my 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 I had to go pick up my papers. There's two papers in my town. Uh, one would drop off papers to your house. The other one you had to go pick it up from mm -hmm. the distribution center. And the one that was the distribution center was not too far from my house, but my mom would take me there to pick up my papers. And then I had like a little bit of a road that you had to drive. Uh, so she would drive me on those roads. And then I, I lived in an apartment complex and I got the route where I lived. So I oh, would, nice. I had a bad, I, she would drive me. And then when we got to the apartment area, there was, I don't know, one, two, three, four maybe six apartment buildings that I did all their papers plus the street afterwards. And uh, she would drop me off and I would, I would walk the paper out. So I would walk I, and I would deliver the, I had a big old paper bag, like a paper, yeah. with my paper bag. had a bag and, over his shoulder. He had a red a lot of, I, I, I didn't like, <laughs> it was like, there was a lot of times my mom would drive me through the whole thing, but there was times where like I, I would walk it or I would walk a section because it was, was did you do it in the winter too yeah my first day was a snowstorm you oh couldn't even God. see the street signs um and i did it for i did it for a good year probably then i quit and then i went back to it uh, and then i i did it my senior year of high school um i was missing out on everything because i was working every weekend so i picked up a paper route and then every time it was so it was so like if you're going to do it for one for one comp like paper you should just do it for the other one because you're going to be there doing this. You're driving by. So you just do both at the yeah, same yeah. time. So it started with that. And then I ended up like after that, I wanted to, I needed to make more money. So then I picked up two more routes. So I had four routes at one point. And then I would like sub for people that went on vacation. So I would, like times I would do five or six. And I did that for a long time. It was, I mean, did, did you have, did you have to go around to eat? Cause I had a paper route too, but I was, I was young. I was still in school, probably like eighth grade, ninth grade or whatever. And it was the Daily News, which wasn't the big paper. The Philadelphia oh. Inquirer was the big paper that had all the ads in it. The Daily News was like the one in the afternoon oh, that came out. So I would deliver it after school, but I had a small route, just like two or three blocks around. But I destroyed that route. I, you know, it was people wanted their people wanted their papers before I even got out of school. You know what I mean? I was getting out of school oh, yeah. at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. They wanted, they wanted the news early. Yeah, they oh, wanted, I was they wanted in the morning. Ad. I was <laughs> you know, in the morning. They had it. I, I can remember like 15. knocking on each door like, you know, it was I forget what it was at the time, maybe five bucks for the week or something like that. And ho hopefully get a tip with collect it. Collect your own money. Yeah, we had to collect our own money. Yeah, and you had a little ticket book. I would I was so yeah. bad at collecting money, too. Yeah, I would just go if I needed if I was going out with my friends and I needed 20, 30, 40 bucks or whatever. <laughs> I would just go collect till I got enough money and then I would leave. <laughs> and then like when I quit, when I quit, I like took the book and I just pulled it, made everyone current. Oh. I made everyone quit. People always, I like wasted, I like lost out on so much money. Oh, yeah. But I was just like, I just wanted to go. I just wanted, I mean, this is, you know, like the middle, mid 90s, late 90s. Uh, yep. I, you know, you, gas was 99 cents a gallon. I wanted to, eventually I was driving a car. I wanted to put gas in my car. So I would go, you know, get 10 bucks for gas and then go off on my day. 
and that'd be it. You know, I'd be well, good. That's yeah. funny. We all have something. Oh, sorry. No, I was, I was saying that they, I would, I would hope for these tips to come in, but I was such Christmas, a, like, Christmas, bonus. Oh, Christmas, was, oh. Christmas was decent. I think they felt a couple hundred like, bucks the weeks, but I, I was bad with the living. Like, you know, I would, everything turned into be a, a sport, you know, or a competition. I would have, <laughs> you know, my brothers come with me where, yeah. You know, can you reach three houses away up on the porch? And then we're throwing, we're hitting yep. doors. We're, you know, and it was, it just turned into being not yep. a good uh, use of my time. My, you know? I actually had a paper out for one summer, but it wasn't mine. One of my aunts, she had a paper out. She like got hurt. Or, I don't remember the exact, she like hurt her knee or something. And my mom offered to cover it for her while, so she didn't lose it till she got better. Mm. And then my mom brought me to help her. And so like we, I helped her do the, she, it was a driving one though. Like it was all through the city. But so I really? used to go like, you just, like you said, I'd go to the distribution center and we used to have to pair them up. Did you have to pair them up? Like you had to, there were the ads and the newspaper and we had to put the ads inside of the newspaper. Yep. Yeah. So we had to Especially pair for the them Sunday. Up. Yeah. You would get inserts and stuff. Usually Monday yeah. was a good day. There was no insert, but like yep. Sundays were horrible with all the ads. And then oh, man, at one point right. you could pay, you could pay, somebody that they, they would put your inserts together they would do okay. it for you and uh but like if it, it that was the one that you had to go pick it up if you it was the one that dropped it off they would start dropping stuff off like on you know saturday and i lived in an apartment building i have to drag it inside to my apart <laughs> to my apartment like my I, you should have said up the stairs that would I mean, and i'm sure my i'm i'm, I'm i probably don't remember how much my mom probably did most of this with like most of it. Like I said, I walk like I, I'm not saying I walked a I I can't tell in my head I walked a ton of it by myself. But my mom, I don't know if she's gonna listen to this, but if she does, she's probably gonna be like, I drove his ass everywhere. Oh, can I say that? I'm sorry. I said that I said the A word. I'm sorry. Can we cut that out? I don't wanna say. she's like I because my mom wouldn't say that either. <laughs> she wouldn't cuss, but she's like she drove me around probably most of it but like mm -hmm. i had uh she drove a, a neon a dodge neon i drove a dodge neon so i had so many paper routes like to do a sunday paper oh my i had it i had to use sunday, both yeah. cars i had to use both cars i mean yep. for how like thanksgiving christmas like i uh, used two cars like every week it got it got to be a big production. Like yeah, was, my, my my paper route only had like twenty papers, but it was the Daily News. It was a thin paper. We could roll them up, put a rubber band around them. Oh, fun, but man. then eventually, you know, we were doing it. We started. Oh well, we I say, my brother, my older brother started off with it, and then he stopped doing it. Then I did it, and then I recruited grandma to drive me around to do it. <laughs> and then it was, you know, it was. It turned. I think my younger brothers ended up doing it after us, but we. I'm pretty sure once we we all stopped doing the paper route, the neighborhood was happy because you know <laughs> we were probably the we were probably the worst paper route anybody could have. I had one time when I was those this was brothers when, <laughs> I was broken in, windows. when I was in college, I was not getting much sleep. I had started working at Blockbuster, I was still doing my papers, and I would like pull off after I drop a paper off. I would take like a 10, 15 minute nap <laughs> between. And it's like the winter time. And I went to, I drove, I did commuter school with my buddy. And like, we had so many, when we had classes, we had so many books and stuff. We would keep books in our car. So we each had each other's keys. And at one point, like it's winter time. I took a nap. I got out of the car. I locked my car running <laughs> while I delivered a paper. When I went back, I had my car running with, I can't get a key. I had no keys to get into the car. And my buddy oh, lived man. across town. So I had to go, I had to walk home <laughs> and I had to get my mom to, I don't know if she oh, drove yeah. me or I had to borrow her car, drive across town to, to get my car, my key, spare key for my buddy to drive all the way home so I could unlock my car that's been running. Just wasting. It's man, Dan's mom is like the hero of a I lot know. of the stories. Like, oh, my mom's the best, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is it's so it was so oh it was the worst. I love it. That's great. At one time my car broke down my uh, tire <laughs> fell off 
<laughs> what? The tire just doesn't. I'm breaking fall. down. That's the big deal. That's a big deal. My tire, my tire, like tire the axle, off. not the axle, like the. I got my tires changed and they didn't put the lug nuts in there right. Oh, no. So like my tire fell off, and I had my paper routes to do. I finished the paper route, and this is like this is later on. So I didn't I didn't have like a paper bag or anything. I had to walk with papers, like and I have to like deliver them. There's like nobody you can call. Hey, my tire fell I, off. It's I'm like not the early two thousands. I don't have a cell phone. cell phone. I don't have a cell phone. I didn't get a cell phone until like two thousand and five. <laughs> my bad. At one point, I, I mean, I, I've done paper routes a few times, and I came back to do papers one more time because I was still working at Blockbuster, but I wanted to quit. So it is before I just started doing casinos, and I picked up a paper route for a while. And it was so miserable. Like, I just one day I just stopped going. I was like, I can't do it anymore because I didn't tell my work I was doing it. So I would work till I would work till midnight, uh, working at Blockbuster. And then I'd have to come home and do papers. And then some days I had to go back and work at Blockbuster. I'd have to open the store at nine o'clock. And it's like an hour drive to get there. So I'd leave at midnight when they close and get home by one, sleep. But I have to do my papers. So I have to leave. To, I have to go back out there, but I have to have my papers delivered by like 6.30 in the morning. So I would not sleep. So eventually I just like, forget You this. drove an hour to work at Blockbuster? Wait, eventually, uh, at some point, yeah, when I was... I was wow, uh, that's quite the commute for a I was just, <coughs> well, this, ga- this ga- is not a brag. Was- Gas was, was 35 a, cents back then. I was a store, I was a store manager. Oh, well, oh. Then, yeah, I gotcha. Like, I, I mean, Blockbuster was a great... He, Blockbuster he loves the titles. Was a loves great the titles. <laughs> He loves the title. Loves the no, title. It's, it's Ambassador, a, manager. Listen, no, uh, store manager. Store manager. Not, I'll say this. Manager. That is a huge brag because today, like today's youth is fan. And even us, like we miss blockbusters. I like, I miss walking into blockbuster. Yeah. And, pick, and so like for you to say you were a blockbuster manager, that's store like a total manager. Store, store manager. That's well, a total that, flex. Like I'm you, so jealous of that. Oh, so, you, so you were I the was, guy. You were the guy that stood behind the counter asking me if I rewinded the. the no, tapes. that's what you would think. No, most of, at uh, one point ooh, being I a store manager didn't mean anything. Work. It meant I worked ten hours a day by myself because uh, I was I was in there. I was at there. I got into Blockbuster right <laughs> at the <overhyped>. peak, <laughs> and then yeah. I quit like as it was like just dying. So yeah. I was working ten hours a day by myself. Uh. I mean, literally, by I mean, basically, like being a reseller. But, please, but I would like have to be, be kind and bathroom. rewind, huh? Please be kind and rewind. No, we never charge. Like we, uh, when I started working there, we never charged. We had rewinders, and we just rewound. I didn't really care. Uh, like, do you I wish you could more... go back and buy all the video games that they put on clearance because they used to sell their yeah. used video games. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, that, that would. I, mean, I think fortune. about that all the time. I think about I that all the time. Just wish I could, as a kid, like I wanted to buy all those, or teenage, I wanted to buy all those games that were on clearance. All the N64 games. Oh like my we used, to, we used to do so buy two, games. get one. Like, oh, I don't think, that, I don't remember, I don't think, get, at some point, it's very rarely that they put, uh, we put games, buy one, get one, but we would run like VHS and DVDs, buy one, get one all yeah. the time. And I'm sure those were like some resellers coming in there. They would just come in with just mounds of them. And now, right now, I'm thinking, like, oh, my gosh. But a lot of times, it was buy, but buying, like, two N64 games and getting a free N64 game. Could you imagine? Yeah. yeah. And they weren't even that expensive either. Like, you could get them for cheap. Yeah. I got a question. I got a Blockbuster question for you, though, that I have to ask. Because it was something that I always did when I went into Blockbuster. And What's I know that? a lot of people did it. When the movie wasn't on the shelf, you would ask them to go into the return box. And s- Did you guys hate that or what? <laughs> Yeah, because they wouldn't believe you if you literally just checked. And then yeah. the store I worked at, it was we had we had well most of them would have they had two the inside drop and the outside drop. Right. And if it was the the outside drop was like you know it's like a longer walk, and you were like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I just checked, and you're like, I well, just no, can you check? Again? I saw somebody drop some in there. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, I I hate it. That was like, did you, did you get like first dibs on on? renting the movie like the new release did you guys see them first or did you always play them in the store is that why well, so when you playing in the store you could only play on the weekends you had a they would send you a trailer of um i wonder what those would be worth like it was a vhs tape of like just blockbuster ads and movies that are coming out i wonder if the, i knew 
I don't even, man, I, I probably threw up. so many of those away too. that up on eBay because they got to be circulating out there. They would send you, and it was like, it might have been every two weeks or so. I don't, it might have been once a month. Uh, eventually, they turned into like a DVD. They would send you that. And then during uh, like the last two hours or during the week, uh, you could watch like um, Disney movies. You could watch a Disney movie. Only Disney? Mostly like cartoon, oh, like family, family uh, oriented. Mm-hmm. Stuff like Some that. Of the blockbusters had like a, a section for kids where they had a big TV set up for and had a kid. yeah a lot of them like yeah and then eventually they they stopped doing it it was like a play area like yeah then they had then they had the, the like the sixty they had like a sixty four um they had like a they machine I think right I'm pretty I don't sure they had a machine that. I'm pretty sure they had a machine um yeah, it was man yeah. such good memories that's why that's such a flux because. It was it was how it was Hollywood videos was was big in my area when I was growing up. Hollywood videos that was like, and then Blockbuster of course came along. But I can remember going to Hollywood videos more. Uh, Oh, that that reminds me of a bolo though, guys. And Dan, I want to ask because I just recently sold a Nintendo carry case from like a video store. Do you guys ever see like a Nintendo carry case from like a that people because they used to rent the whole console? Or even a VCR kit, but the Nintendo case is worth some good money. I sold them for like sold for like two hundred and fifty bucks. I used to have a I used to have a couple of them. Oh Oh, man! I uh, my my old roommate he 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 got a uh, I gave him one because he had his Xbox three sixty, and he would like he would go he would go on his days off he would go hang out at his girlfriend's house so he wanted to take his Xbox so he had I gave him a case to do it all and then um they were like. They I were so good. They were like hard shell plastic. They weren't like yeah. cheap. Sorry, yeah. I just wanted to make it like they're, yeah, they're so if you've ever really seen nice. they're like a hard shell plastic case for those games. That's probably yeah. why you wanted to borrow it because it wasn't a cheap case like this. No, because it will it specifically it had all the cutouts and everything for Xbox yeah. 3, like a, the whole thing. Like mm-hmm. it was it was nice. It was that was nice. And I remember yeah. having because I would buy like I bought the um I bought an Xbox from like when we sold like I don't know if we sold man, maybe i didn't buy an xbox that would i don't feel like we sold an xbox we might have sold an maybe xbox. an original xbox yeah the original okay yeah that's what it was because yep. yeah so they yeah. they had that and i, I bought one because I, I used to have a cut and i remember having a case for it and yep, that's awesome uh, man. That, you don't have it anymore huh it might be i i doubt i do because at one do point for some money i'll tell you what I, yeah. I, you know everything because i i at one point last year i went i was digging through uh, like a bin outside, and I found my uniform, and I sold I sold my polos for fifty bucks a pop. Heck yeah! Uh, and I have I one I haven't I don't know if I found it. And it was just a regular blue polo. And then they have they had at one point they were like a gold collar. And I think those could go for more, but I had a long sleeve one, and I had one that said store manager on it. Ooh. I want to find one of those now. That's that's going to become like a a grail for me to find a blockbuster polo shirt out out in the wild. For sure, really? yeah, that'd be a yeah. fun. I mean, again, nostalgia memories. I loved going and shopping. You know, at, from a kid, from from me being a kid all the way till my kids, like I took them to Blockbuster, like the way my mom took me to Blockbuster as a teenager. I took my kids. It was a big deal when they there. were young. We didn't go to Blockbuster very often as a kid. When I was yeah, a kid, it's such a. And then great... even when I got older, we went to we had box office video. Uh, in, in town, in our town, we had Blockbuster, Box Office, and Hollywood. But Hollywood. like Blockbuster was always the most expensive, and yeah. Hollywood was across town. So Box Office is always cheaper. So that we would go there, and then yeah. once in a while, I'd be able to go to Blockbuster. And I just yeah, always thought a... that would be like the coolest job to have is to work at Blockbuster. <laughs> we have the, we had one called Scottsdale Video, and it was in Tempe. It didn't even make sense. Like why there's a town called Scottsdale, but it wasn't in Scottsdale. It was in Tempe. It was called Scottsdale, or it was in Mason. It was called. Maybe Scottsdale. the owner's name was Scott and his brother Dale. They oh, yeah. maybe they ran it. Scott and Dale. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. That's such nostalgia, though. Like to think about, and it's sad that now my kids they won't have video stores to take their. You know, they, it's gone yeah. for them. And they went there. They went to Blockbuster as little kids. They remember it, but it's gone now. Anyways, I love that nostalgia. Yeah. It's gone just like this podcast. <laughs> this episode five. 